Puerto Region has a regional assembly, an annual regional assembly. And this year, the um, regional assembly theme uh, was called intersectionalities. And um, it was launched and there you know, was graphics behind it. There was a big push for the registration for it. And um, some folks, uh, Asia and I were a couple of them, got this information and, and we're like, huh, this is interesting. And we went over to the websites and we, we all individually were doing this, we're kind of being curious and recognized that, um, very quickly recognized that there, the framing of this regional assembly was highly problematic um, because it was not framing uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's work uh, who um, came up with the idea of intersectionality, um, is a working um, professor and um, somebody who works on, on this um, currently. And we, we reached out to each other and said, hey, have you seen this? And yeah, a, Venn di a Venn diagram of just things doesn't, there's a specific definition. And there was literally just a Venn diagram of social justice and you, whatever it even was. I was like, oh, honey, why though? So anyway, yeah, I had to intersect that. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, is it worth spending two seconds like unpacking Kimberly Crenshaw's work a little bit. So for the folks who hear this and go, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, because Kimberly Crenshaw described intersectionality as a, an oppression that black women, and in this is in her work, faced that black men did not face and white women did not face. So it was an intersection of misogyny and racism that compounded the two of them and and was unique um, in that in that case. So just because you have two identities does not make something intersectional. And I think like people want to go, oh, we're talking about class and whiteness. <laughs> and that's intersectional. And it's just it's really not. Right. So I just I think for people going, why would the why was that problematic? Um, I think it's worth just saying you can look up Kimberly Crenshaw's work and read it in much more depth, but it's worth the, the two second primer, I think. Yeah, and um, so, you know, we, the, there were four of us that got together, Aisha, myself, um, Leslie Mack, and Lena Gardner, Lena K. Gardner, and we got together and we, we wrote an email um, to the Mid-America region leadership and said, hey, this is problematic. And, um, we, we subsequently found out that, um, that they had been told um, that it would potentially be problematic. And, um, you know, we're gonna give you the link to the website where um, Mid-America Region has, has issued an apology and they have rebranded the, um, the regional assembly and have said what they're you know, gonna lay out to do correctly um, in the future to try and mitigate some of this. Um, but to me, really, where, where, this, um, where this really becomes hyper problematic is this, um, this trend that we've seen, we've seen for decades, uh, where again and again and again, folks have, are saying before these things happen, hey, this has the potential to be problematic, right? And nobody listens to them. And um, Don, I, I saw you holding your head um, because it's it's just like you know um, deja vu all over again. Um, and Hope brought in you know some really Hope, if you could say what you, what you were talking about. Unfortunately, this is not a new pattern. This has been a part of who we are for a lot of years, more than twenty five. If I go back to the Thomas Jefferson ball. Someone said this is going to be a problem. Gladys McNatt was on the planning committee and it was shove it under the carpet, Gladys. We won't do this again next year. And that's how I came into that picture. This business of not being listened to, not being taken seriously. Tut tut, nice hope. But when it comes to the real work of transformation, 
we are, in my opinion, too often just kind of left there. Oh, hope is venting again. When actually, if, if we are taken seriously and thoughtfully, let's engage in conversation. Why is Hope saying this? Why is Dawn saying this? Why is Michael saying that? Maybe we can get to a better place where we can learn to listen to each other and work more effectively and not have all of these wonderful apologies in one month. Yeah. So we find our voices, we use them. People need to listen. So that's my hope. You know, that little phrase, this is not the UU way. Okay, what is the UU way? Exactly. And to that point, do the research. I mean, the, you know, the, so the Thomas Jefferson ball was years, what, 20 years ago? And then um, Lareda was a couple of years ago. And it wasn't just one person with leading up to Lareda. It was several people. Um, and so let's say it's one person. It's Hope or it's Aisha or it's Chris. How about you do your research? It's that Google is your friend sometimes when the Russians aren't hacking it. But anyway, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the research is there if someone, and you, you world. I mean, if you didn't want to listen to one trans person, well then call three others. Oh, okay. There's a few on staff, like where are we going? So it, at this point, there's no excuse for this to continue to happen in the way it's happening. Um, we, we, please stop. I don't, who do we write a letter to? Like, please just in general, stop. If something's uh, potentially going to be harmful or be problematic, please research with five, like, do we do a step-by-step -step guide? What do we do? Unfortunately and sadly, I'm not surprised because this is how the systems get perpetuated and they keep going, right? Your systems that uphold patriarchy and white supremacy. And if the behavior is to change, you know, maybe you do need a checklist, like Aisha suggested, like, here's what you do, people. But even that is not going to land on ears that are listening and eyes that are seeing, right? So it's an interesting question of how do you actually, um, for lack of a better phrase, institutionalize the behaviors that need to be engaged in so that we can start dismantling some of this stuff. If, if I can step in and um, it occurs to me that <clears throat> this is how the UU does it. This is the UU way. When we say that's not the UU, no, it is. It is. It is how the pan is seasoned matters. Our foundational DNA organizationally is a bunch of old white guys from Harvard. And when you cook, like this is what I say, when you cook in cast iron, how you season that pan matters. And whatever you cook in it first will flavor everything you cook in it afterwards. And we are living out the seasoning that was instilled in the 1600s, where that white guys didn't need to listen to anybody else. And I think we need to before we can before we can really start institutional change we need to understand what the institution is and understand that this is the system and no it's not attractive to look at that and see our own faults and see our own shortcomings and see that um this system was founded in a white supremacist patriarchy um, but if we need to address that before we can do anything else, otherwise it's band-aids, you know, on, on an amputation. I also, I've been, um, <clears throat> reading, I'm taking a graduate course. So I'm reading a lot of actions of immediate witness over the years. And I'm also reading some of the stuff on commission on institutional change. And it's so frustrating because we've had the words for a long time. We've had the ideas. We're smart people, we think, we like to think, right? Whatever smart means. Um, it's so the, so we know, so every time I'd read something that is compelling and like makes sense from 1998 or not, you know, 2000, I wanna punch something because I'm like, wait a minute. So we have the information and we're just literally choosing not to, not to do this. Yeah, and um, 
Everett Renee Harvey Thompson wrote that, you know, the work of Kenneth Jones and Chima Okuna, the, you know, culture of white supremacy, I mean, that document itself can be that checklist. Like we are not at, at you know, for lack of um, a checklist in how to do this. Like there are many checklists out there. Um, the, the reason why it continues to happen is, is the institutionalization of that white supremacy culture um, is always going to be brought back unless it is actively being dismantled. It was fascinating having uh, known and read those characteristics of white supremacy from the Tema Okun paper that we've all read. You know, one of the things is um, uh, like uh, perfectionism and timeliness, like everything has to be like on time and precise. And last year, it really struck me everything was kind of on time, but there was this little ripple that went through like, look at us, we're doing things on time. What does that say? And the same thing happened this year where people are like, oh, look, we're five minutes behind. I wonder what that indicates, right? And it was this fascinating uh, example of um, uh, battling the system, but yet recognizing what we're doing. I thought that was just absolutely amazing, two years in a row. And to that point, I mean, I, I love that you uplift that. And as, as the, you know, one of the, one of the lead organizers, um, it is even within a framework of come, finding our way home and multicultural presence and, and people of color in the same space, it just goes to show, I think that when folks say, oh, we have blue and we have drum and they have finding our way home. And, you know, like what more, what, what more can you ask for? that we're still operating in a framework of hegemony. You know, there are institutions that guide, you know, when we can begin and when we end and, 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 and how capitalism operates in that and, and, and who, you know, where we are and, and, and how much um, is consumed while we're there and whether or not, as I, as, you know, black queer leader, you know, like, Oh my God, am I spending too much money? Is the budget, where's the budget? And, and am I, you know, or is everybody's room in the right space? And all of these things that are constantly there that while the intention is to create a lovely space for people of color, <laughs> religious professionals of color to come together and have a wonderful time, underneath all that is still a mountain of, you know, institutional racism, structural racism, you know, like, you know, and, and, and all the other isms and, 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 and phobias that, that come alongside of that. Um, but I think that, that naming that is so important.